What's going on guys, it's nice to bring you a new video. This is gonna be my Magplar build for Greymore. I basically took my MagDK build and ended up putting it on Magplar and I found that it worked very well. I tried a lot of other builds that I've seen from different people and things people suggested to me and I didn't like anything nearly as much as this. So let's get right into it. As always, we're gonna show the unbuffed stats. So 35k mag, 33k health, 17k stam, 2100 spell damage, see the rest of the numbers there for yourself. Everything's in a mag, and I'm a Breton. I would suggest Argonian, honestly, if you're going to go another race, but those are just my top two picks. I definitely think you need sustain and some tankiness when you play a Magplar. As for Mundus, we're using the Apprentice, and for food, we're using Sugar Skulls. And we are a Vampire in Stage 3. You could go Stage 2 if you want, but I would go at least Stage 2 because we are using Mistform and you definitely want to get that spell damage whenever you come out of Mistform for extra healing, extra damage, anything like that. I go Stage 3 just for Undeath and I don't notice any of the negative effects of it whatsoever. Getting into the gear. On our front bar, we have Overwhelming. So we have the Lightning Staff, Nurn Honed. Just fits Magplar very well. You could go proc sets or you could go damage sets. If you're not going to go with a proc set here, I would go stuns front bar, but it's purely up to you if you want to go procs or just damage. And we have that on the lightning, one body piece, and two jewelry pieces. Now for our back bar, we have Cyrodiil's Crest. So this is where it comes in, how I said it's similar to my Mag Decay. Cyrodiil's Crest just fits very well into the Magplar playstyle, I feel like, because you do have to be tanky and you do have to have some good healing, and I feel like this really gets you to that point. So whenever you go on your back bar and you successfully block, you're going to heal. It tooltips for almost 11k unbuffed, but once we put down our heals, everything like that, we go near our resource. The tooltip does get higher, as you guys can see, so it can proc for a good 5-6k heal, and this happens every 5 seconds. So it's very nice whenever you're getting put on defense, you just hold block and heal up. But we have that on five pieces, so we have that on the one H on the back bar, and then four body pieces on the body. For the shield, we have overwhelming right here to keep the four piece of it as well. This is one thing I didn't have on my mag decay. On my mag decay, I just had six pieces of crest on my back bar. But I got an overwhelming shield, so on my back bar, I have four pieces overwhelming to get that spell damage bonus as well. So if you can do that, I would suggest you do that. And the 1H is powered and the shield is sturdy. I'm running four sturdy, I believe. The shield, chest, hands, and boots. And shoulder. So yeah, four pieces. And then everything else is in pen. So I have a mix of sturdy and in pen. It's purely up to you though. Like I said, I do a good bit of blocking on this. I have sword and board. So whenever I do need to tank, I can block as much as I want. And I really don't have any issues with stamina. If you want to just be outright a little bit more tankier through in pen, you can do that of course. But... Especially next patch, Impen's getting nerfed again, so I would highly suggest working Sturdy and other traits in your build now, but just my suggestion. Back bar, we have Escapist, so you proc that, you get some CC immunity. And then front bar, I'm actually using Double Dots. Double Dots just fits very well with everything else on our build, with all the dots we have, all the dot damage, and we're using the Malakath Band, so they actually do a good bit of damage and help us pressure people a lot. If you're not going to use these, I would just use a Berserker Glyph on the Lightning Staff to get the extra spell damage, but that's really up to you. And last but not least, for the monster set, we're using Groththar. I really don't think anything else is going to be Groththar and Overwhelming just because of how much AoE and constant pressure it is. But like I said, if you want to go just regular damage rather than procs, I would highly suggest Balorgs. Everybody knows Balorgs is just a ton of damage this patch, and you can keep it up quite often with Crescent. So... Like I said, if you want to go just regular damage instead of procs, go stuns and battle arcs. That would be my top suggestion instead of overall Ming and Grothar. And one last look at all the body pieces. Everything is traglyphed, all the sturdy, all the impen. And then the jewelry is all reduced cost. And there's the Malakath band. Everything is arcane. I wouldn't go another trait here. I go arcane. It keeps your damage up a little bit higher. It keeps your healing a little bit higher. You don't really need to go another trait on your jewelry. Now getting into the skills. Front bar, pretty basic, puncturing sweeps, topple, Ellie Drain, Purifying Light, Solo Barrage, and Crescent. 
when we go on our back bar we have degen this is because i'm using tripods if you're not going to use tripods you can swap something else out here but i really don't feel like anything is more worthwhile here likewise this is another dot this is more pressure on people so i like degen but if you want to go something else there you could i tried living dark i know some people still use the uh the eclipse bubble but honestly for me i really don't feel like it's worth it anymore and I don't feel like it's needed either, so that's just my personal opinion on that. Using Honor the Dead, just the sustain more for Breath of Life. Breath of Life is honestly quite bad. Like, I tried using Breath of Life because I was getting annoyed at my Honor the Dead going to friends whenever I was playing with them and, you know, not getting my own heal. But the heal on Breath of Life is, like, pretty low. I don't know when they changed it to uh, do, like, a low off heal on it. But, uh, yeah, you definitely want to go Honor the Dead and just spam it if you have to. Using Elusive Mist, as I said, this form. This is our whole Snare Removal Kite ability. Using Extended Ritual. I know some people are using the Damage Ritual. Honestly, I think they're insane for doing that, especially if you're 1vxing or doing any type of outnumbered PvP. You definitely need the extra purge and the extra duration on this, in my opinion. But, you know, if you want to go for the Damage Purify, by all means, go for it. And I'm using Channeled Focus, the Magmorph of the Rune. If you want to go the Stand Morph, could purely do that but that's up to you and then we're using temporal guard i would not take off temporal guard i really like it for the tankiness especially when you just have to sit on your back bar and tank for a moment definitely helps out quite a lot you could go sword and mortal here i think you're way better off with the tankiness from undo though so that's just my opinion and finishing this out with cp let's get through this pretty quick i have one siphoner 16 sprinter i don't do a whole lot of sprinting but just put points in there for just to get a little bonus 72 warlord cc breaking much cheaper five bashing focus just extra points we have 43 arcanist our regen is very low but i still put some points in there because you basically have all these extra points if you want to put those other places you'd basically be maxing out like warlord or tumbling and shadow ward as you guys can see i do have shadow ward maxed out pretty much because like i said we have a lot of sturdy we have everything like that we're in heavy armor so we can purple block as much as we want whenever we need to tumbling i don't tend to roll a lot but whenever i do roll it's going to be a lot cheaper with this of course going into blue we have 43 blessed 23 elf born 43 le expert 40 spell erosion 40 master at arms and then we have 81 thumb. People are going to be like, why do you have 81 in thumb? Well, for the exploiter passive, because you're going to practice off your topple. So you're always procking the single target. Likewise, whenever I do play with friends, they tend to play stam. So they're spamming off balance on everybody with either tactician CP or D swing, anything like that. So this 10% damage from this is going to end up being more damage than floating my CP somewhere else. Likewise, we have 81 in Thawne because we have a lot of dots. We have our proc sets, we have solar barrage, we have degen, we have everything like that. We have our double dots, like we have a ton of dots. So we're actually going to end up doing more damage, I feel like, with this. But that is just my opinion. This is just what I've felt like recently. So if you guys want to try something else, of course, you could put it other places. But I think you're going to do the most damage with these points in a thom and getting exploiter. Going over to red, just my basic red CP, so 61 iron, 43 resistant, 43, 43 hardy and Ellie, 37 thick skin, and 43 quick recovery. And yeah guys, that's about it for the build. Pretty straightforward, super similar to my mag decay, but I do feel like this build is super strong, and it's probably going to be just a strong next patch, but we'll see when we get there. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed. As always, I'm Ness, links to my Patreon, join me down below. Thank you guys as always to my supporters, and I'm out.